but then get like a big hole that you can drop stuff into or a side entry pocket to access your hole. Multiple ways to get into your hole. So I'll probably end up with one of those creepy tail bags. Wow, this freeway is jacked up. Dude, get off your phone. What a danger. Lady. Kriga 30 is the one I'm looking at. So they have a 10, a 20, and a 30. They might even have a 5. And I don't know about the 30 and the 20, but the, t the 20 and the 10, you can use the 20 as a base pack and strap the 10 to that. So that is some cool functionality. I wonder if you can use the 30 as a base pack, strap the 20 to that, and then strap the 10 to that, which would totally make sense, but there might just be some size constraints. So I'm gonna have to find out. I will find out, and I'll put the answer in the info below. Kriga is pretty highly recommended. They're a little pricey, but everything I've read online says that they're fantastic. It isn't really formed, and it isn't really um, pocket-like. It's more uh, just one big, one big area. It doesn't have dividers or that kind of thing. So you got to be aware of that. I have technical hiking backpacks, so I'm kind of used to just one big space and not really additional pockets because that's what it is when you buy a, a hiking backpack. You can get like a big hole that you can drop stuff into or a side entry pocket to access your hole. Multiple ways to get into your hole and uh, that's pretty much all they give you with regards to organization there isn't anything so I'm used to that so I don't have any concerns about the creek just being a big hole I do have concerns about it being just really big and me trying to transport relatively small things jeez this truck is just massive um, but I just hate all the tank bags I've seen aesthetically they look terrible I never know what size would be good for my needs and I'm sure if I got a tail bag even if it was too big most of the time it would probably never be too small what else do I want to buy for the bike I really want an aftermarket exhaust the CBR 500R is all the all the new 500s they're really quiet I don't think at highway speeds that a loud pipe will save a life but after watching Royal Jordanian, it's it's definitely apparent that at low speeds, at city speeds, if you have loud pipes, people notice you more. The problem with the loud pipes at highway speeds is that by the time anyone hears your pipe, you're already passing them because you're kind of moving. Okay. I'm going to say something that's wrong, but the effect is as if you're moving faster than the sound. And the reality is that the sound is being projected backwards away from you, and so as a result of that, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't bypass you to get to the people in front of you very quickly. It, um, and it's, it seems like you're moving faster than the speed of sound, which is cool. So I want to get an aftermarket exhaust. One, because you know, I mean, I guess it's nice to have a little more quote-unquote visibility um, in slower moving traffic where people can hear your pipes and maybe they'll look around for you. The other thing is that I want my bike to sound a little bit cooler than it does, which is pretty vain, but what can I say? I think my bike looks awesome. I really like it and that's what matters. And uh, I can't really hear it when I turn it on. I mean. Once I get my earplugs in and I get my helmet on, it's just gone. What I don't want to do is make little kids cry. I don't want to have one of those bikes that's so loud 
that I hurt children's ears when I drive by them. I'd like to really avoid that. So that's, I guess, that's my concern with getting a slip-on exhaust would be, what if it was so loud that I was bothered by it and it was bothering people around me? I don't want to contribute to noise pollution. I just want my bike to sound cooler. I don't want it to sound one of those ridiculous ear rending, you know, makes your ears bleed kind of things. So I'm not sure, not sure how to address that fear. If I could hear one in person, if any of you guys have a Two Brothers exhaust on your CBR 500R and you live in the Southern California area, I'd love to uh, check that out. Are you gonna let me through? You are gonna let me through. What a nice truck. Thank you, truck. I don't subscribe to just doing the low peace sign and that everything else is lame because I don't subscribe to the idea that manufacturing cool is cooler than being enthusiastic. I think enthusiasm is awesome and uh, people should be enthusiastic about things. Look at this homie. What's up, Skelet? Nice. Oh, look at that tail bag. See, that's not bad. Let's follow this person and check out their tail bag. What's it up? It's got like rivets on it? I can't see it, Bob's, but it's pretty rad -o. Oh, rad -o. What the F? With regards to lane splitting on curves, they say that you should be careful, and I think that, <clears throat> that caution has a lot to do with your visibility into the curve, but what I've noticed is that people do the best job of regulating the space that they have between their vehicles on a curve. So, what gear am I in? Probably second. So, yeah, be careful lane splitting between curves and at the same time um, be prepared to be surprised by how much room people give you on like sweepers if you want to lane switch. Switch. If you're lane switching, switch through the lanes. Do not be afraid of the sweepers. Do not be afraid. I mean, be a little afraid. Hello? And then there's stuff like this. What are you going to do, dude? Oh, of course you are. The number one thing about lane splitting is that you just have to be aware of everything that's happening all around you 110% of the time. And be prepared to react. And most of the time I think the correct reaction is to slow down. If you're not sure about what someone's intentions are, if you think they might want to change lanes, if you just don't know, just, just go ahead and preemptively slow down and you'll be fine. Probably.